we have um, now a panel here on stage and I like to call all my panelists and speakers here first of all she's already here yes I can see her Gabriella Richardson founder of Yachting Ventures we saw her already this morning she was part of the jury at the startup pitch Gabriella thanks for joining us again all right maybe you take this seat Laurent Probst is Laurent here Laurent Laurent one minute okay thank you then I have Benno Weissner project manager Zenit Center for Innovation and Technology just here around the corner maybe you take this seat Benno and Cornelius Hello. partnership and sustainability manager at team Malizia I saw him already there he is perfect so we're just waiting for Laurent one minute they said 30 seconds probably we start over yeah 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 that's fine hello Benno Vasna so so first of all because you are better than me in this if everybody describes uh, his role why he's he she is sitting here um, what are you expecting from this boat show how are you involved in this startup community industry maybe Gabriella ladies first of course sure can you everyone hear me yeah oh, maybe. Um, hi everyone my name is Gabriella I'm the founder of yachting ventures so we are a startup hub for the leisure marine and yachting industries so we basically provide the um, opportunities and resources that startups need to raise investment and scale. Um, and we were here today helping to organize the pitching event um, as part of the Blue Innovation Doc. And so we sourced all the startups that pitched. And so that was great to be part of that. Um, and just to see that startups are being supported by boat shows um, and given a, a place and a stage to showcase what they do. I think it's really, really important. Um, and yes, my first time at Boot Dusseldorf and actually my first time in Germany. So it's quite fun and exciting to be here. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's me. Okay, you have been to the Altstadt already? No, no. this evening, tonight. I don't oh, know what that is, to. but... <laughs> I'll explain you okay. later, you have to do it, yes. <laughs> Benno? Yeah, thank you for the invitation. My name is Benno Weissner. I'm from the Center of Innovation and Technology here in Nostra Westphalia and we are host or node for the so-called Enterprise Europe network in this region. So um, that's my role here today. And uh, we are supporting uh, SMEs and startups to go international and to go uh, for the development of new products. And um, so the Enterprise Europe network is organized in more than 60 countries. We have uh, regional nodes that support SMEs and startups, for example, from Hamburg to Split, from, uh, from Graz to, to Valencia, and also in uh, Canada, US, or in Japan. We have partners to support the SMEs. The, cost, the service is for free, so it's organized and financed by the European Commission. <laughs> and also by the region of uh, North Ram Westphalia here for our note. And uh, I always say we have two directions. So we help to the development of new products. That means uh, to, do, to give strategic advice on the development of the business development, uh, to help with uh, technology transfer and so on to help with context, for example, also to, to European or international research institutes. That's one point. And the second point is uh, to help SMEs and startups to go international with to help with regulations, with connections, partnering, networking services. And uh, then we have an overlapping always, and that is the, um, yeah, the financing, so how to connect to, to uh, investors, financing tools of the European Union, uh, how to 
connect the regional ecosystem, for example, of Nostrum Westphalia or startup ecosystem with the European system. That's our objective or what we do normally. And of course, we are in a big network with 6,000 or no, 3,000 uh, advisors, 600 organizations nearly all over the world. And in this case, uh, we are organized in groups, so for this I present today the sector group for maritime industry. That's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, perfect, perfect, thank you. So I understand correctly, it's independent, no financial interest. It we are neutral, we are independent, we look at each individual case and we help the company to find the right, maybe funding program, the right way into the direction of uh, investors or business angels, in the direction of international contacts, whatever. Okay, and, uh, uh, and uh, I mean here, this part of the country is not a maritime hub, but you have colleagues in Hamburg, you have colleagues in Italy, yeah, in course. Spain, etc. Okay. Uh, and both, we are also a group for tourism, so that's also a relation to both, so. Okay, thank you very much. Cornelius, first of all, uh, uh, side note, how is Boris doing? Okay? Much better. <laughs> yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, it's, uh, it's great to see uh, uh, for another day at Boat Düsseldorf uh, such a crowd in front. So it was already here on Saturday. Um, speaking on behalf of Boris, not sure whether you know him, Boris Hermann. He's the, the most famous German skipper and um, I'm part of, of his team responsible for the partnership program and our sustainability campaign, A Race You Must Win. Uh, that's what you can see also on his, uh, on his sales, uh, our logo. Um, I'm here today to, let's say, to give a little bit like a different perspective on, on the startup culture and the, and the inno innovation which is uh, behind there. So because this is what drives us forward as a team uh, also because we, ha we have built a new boat and this was quite an experience for everyone <coughs> in the team to uh, pick the right or make the right decisions when it comes to technology and we are competing on the toughest uh, offshore races in the world. Uh, that means like um, those boats are, um, they have to build stable, they have to be, uh, you know, they have to fulfill the requirements of the Southern Ocean like around Antarctica so it's really a uh, high-tech uh, racing sports um, vehicle. And uh, at the same time, uh, we also, when we built a boat, for us, uh, the guiding principle was like, if there is a sustainable alternative when it comes to composites, when it comes to um, any kind of uh, material that we can use, uh, we have picked that alternative, this sustainable alternative. And I'm very glad I also see like one of our partners here that helped us building the boat from Green Boats in the, in the audience. Um, uh, Green Boats is a startup and um, they are building these, uh, uh, these wonderful materials that we also have used on, on the racing yacht Malizia Sea Explorer. And it's like 100% organic uh, material, um, flax. And, uh, and I think this is uh, also quite important to tell this message to the public that there are alternatives out there that we can use in boat building and, um, and they're quite innovative and that drives basically, and I hope that drives that industry forward and creates the market and, and um, you know, bring it out and scale it up uh, mm -hmm. to, to different kinds of applications. Thank how you. Many, uh, sorry, how many kilograms did you use on the new boat? I mean, how, how much, do you, super how much light, trust huh? do you have? <laughs> Um, so we have, uh, we have, of course, when it comes to this kind of uh, racing yachts, it's really tricky because the design um, has, to, as, I, as I mentioned before, it has to fulfill certain stability requirements. And um, so uh, when it comes to, to these materials, we have, for example, used the hatches and the, the different like, uh, pieces inside the boat particular. Um, I, I can't tell you like the exact number, like kilogram number, but <coughs> it's like when it comes to uh, the inside, when you go and climb into this inside the cockpit, then you immediately see like how many panels are there uh, created by green boats and, um, and it's really fascinating to see uh, that this is like, you know, it's becoming real and there are alternatives to glass fiber or carbon fiber, which is quite energy, energy intensive. 
uh, but there are also there are not so many alternatives on the market. You know, that's and that's uh, a big issue. And I hope you can can discuss this also how startups can contribute to the development of these uh, alternatives. Thank yes. You. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Laurent. Thank you for coming, joining us here. Maybe a short description. Uh, uh, what what you are doing? What is your role within this maritime boating sector? Yeah, thank you. So I apologize for my late arrival. I was checking some very, very uh, interesting innovation here around. And in fact, uh, we are operating on behalf of the EU Commission, the Blue Invest platform. So we are recruiting uh, startups with, uh, I would say, very interesting innovation, particularly in the sustainability uh, domain with a sustainability purpose. Uh, and this pr Blue Invest platform aims to finance and to grow these startups. So this is why I'm here today and to speak about it and to discuss with entrepreneurs and to discuss also with potential investors. Okay, so I'm, I'm a journalist by myself, so I was, I'm always asking questions like I'm six years old. Uh, how uh, does it work if I want that little of money of that, of that fund? What do I have to do? So there is a website which is called Brew Invest Platform. Uh, as a company, as a startup, you just have to register. Then you will, your case will be analyzed, you will be called. Uh, then if a, call, if a case is accepted, then you will join the community, you will join the platform, and then you will be, uh, me, uh, you will, you, some meetings with investors will be organized depending on your case, depending on your uh, geographies and so on, in order to find the best match uh, for you. How many investors are in this? Uh, so we have board? today about on the platform, active investors, we have today about 400 investors. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the project was launched three years ago with 70 million. Uh, 800 million have been invested over three years. And now there is a new round of 500 million, which is going to be invested in the next three years, looking at 1.5 million. So it's not only about this industry, it's also about all the blue economy, aquaculture, renewable energy and so on, but this is a big engine for growth. And as investors, as entrepreneurs, I really uh, invite you to join this platform. We have also a big event, a big uh, yearly event in Brussels on March 9, uh, with key investors and key entrepreneurs. So this is a good opportunity to, to see the quality of a platform and, and to check if there is any opportunity for entrepreneurs. Uh, Gabriela, are you uh, somehow part of this? Are you involved in this, or is it a real? Is your do we have a very different approach? Um, no, so we we've been working together for a, a couple of years. Um, obviously, we support each other in terms of the services that we're providing are kind of complementary. So we also have a network of investors that we work with um, that want to see deal flow in in this space specifically, leisure marine and yachting. Um, you know, not broader necessarily blue economy it's very like niche the yachting and the boating but um yeah in short yeah we we know each other okay and uh, commissioner Hahn said okay we need the, uh, another culture probably here the more the american culture of investing is that true do you feel this as well or what in terms of okay um we are more um uh, venture capital open. Uh, well, like more willing to take risk. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's up to the individual in terms of what their appetite for risk is. Um, mm -hmm. The Americans do seem to have more of an appetite, um, but I guess it differs from country to country. And um, obviously, on the angel side of things, they do s tend to take more risk than VC investors that are managing like, other people's money. And mm -hmm. there's more kind of analysis that has to be done when they're deciding whether to invest. Um, and then angel investors tend to be slightly more passion driven, maybe making decisions like with their gut um, that might seem to be more risky. Um, so, so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and what kind of um, different levels do you have if companies approach you? Um, All sorts. So our kind of sweet spot is like um, around like seed stage. Um, so, traditionally, there wasn't much investment going into leisure marine and yachting. So, we're only now starting to see like these like larger Series A, Series B rounds. So, companies that have managed to get to that stage where they're now raising like large sums, like plus two, three million. Um, 
But, but yeah, we work with kind of all stages of companies, um, even like pre-seed, although the market for pre-seed is, is a little bit difficult right now because investors are wanting to see some level of traction. Um, you know, they're not just pouring money into companies without any product or revenue as they were doing about a year ago. Um, but yeah. Yeah, Benno, do, do you come into, into a place then? I mean, if this is the pre-seed seed, so uh, we, we work on every stage, so pre-seed, scale-up, uh, it's all possible. What's, what we do is that we do really uh, look on the technology readiness level and on the investor readiness, and then we decide what kind of instrument is maybe, maybe feasible for, for, for each case. Yeah. And uh, for us, for me, it's for example interesting what stage of uh, startup uh, you are looking for. It is early stage, uh, second stage. Um, so that, that's always interesting to look at partners, uh, what, what, what they are looking for and to understand that. Yeah. And so on the, on the investment platform, you will find different uh, type of investors with different type of stages. So early stage, uh, I would say uh, Series A, Series B. Today we are reinforcing the Series B, Series C, uh, with a new new range of investors, uh, because we think that the scaling we need mm -hmm. more. We have a big uh, financing gap in scaling the, these innovations, mm -hmm. um, and the new the new priority is really to provide a lot of, I would say, training to investors. Okay, a new training program for investors was launched in November. We had now 250 investors who joined this program to explain the, all the opportunities, the new opportunities of a blue economy, and particularly all some of the new innovation that we, we see here, and to explain what are the markets, what are the risks, how, how to frame that, because a lot of investors, most, a large, large majority of investors, they do not know this market. Mm -hmm. Okay, how we can have we to educate them. We have to explain them how it works. We have to explain them the risk of this market. We have to explain them, I would say, the, 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 the vision, the trends. Uh, and this is, this is really a big demand. But there is a big demand. The good news is there is a big demand for investors to know better this domain, this area, in order to invest. Because okay, there's a huge potential. But how can we, I mean, attract them? How can we promote this? Is this a one task for this year, for next year? I mean, personally, I think um, I, there hasn't been that much kind of data available and investors are very kind of numbers orientated. So they want to see um, accurate and reliable data on the size of the market. And so they can pop, like, properly look at an investment opportunity and like, ascertain whether that's going to, the market's going to be big enough for them to be able to get returns that they're looking for. Um, again, that is changing and there is like, more reliable data, but I think that's a big part of it um, as to why investors haven't really taken the industry seriously or been interested in it because it's kind of it was opaque traditionally okay who could who could support this who could come into play I mean who could do this to collect these numbers to get better data well I guess organizations like even at, like organizations like blue invest I, I would have thought must have quite considerable amounts of data that you've collected now. Um, and I guess that also goes into like, the training of the investors and making them aware of the market size because that's the question I get again and again from investors. It's like, well, what's the market size? Like, realistically, how much is this company going to be able to make? Like, you know, so that's the problem. Correct. Are you working on this? Are you on, yeah. on this? Yeah. So there will be, uh, in one month's time, there will be uh, what we call for the first time the publication of an investor report which will cover all the domains of a blue economy with a concrete descriptions and precise descriptions of all these market sizing. And the, the, the challenges, the, I would say some uh, success uh, stories and some elements to illustrate more practically what does it mean to invest into the blue economy. So it's a dedicated uh, report which will also describe the investment strategies of about 80 investors in the blue economy. So this yeah. is the first time it will be issued, uh, Mar March, end of Feb, March uh, this year. Okay, uh, this, this has been handled by uh, European... Uh, it's, it will be published on the European Commission, it's free of charge, 
It will be covers all European countries. Ah, okay, okay. Is this important? No, it's not important for you. If you, if you, uh, uh, a startup approaches you, Benno, um, you are not looking um, into this in detail. Huh? I, you are helping, really. Or um, yeah, we, we are we are helping really with the with the business plan development or business development. We are helping with with the right fin financing to find the right partners. And then we help with different programs that could be Blue Invest, that could be also the European Innovation Council, uh, for example, the Accelerator Program where we are working with, or with AET, with the European Innovation and Technology Center, with the different kicks, or with other European programs where we help, and also we have a network also to European uh, Business Angel Summit where we have a cooperation from our scale up group. So, um, so we have different networks and uh, we are always looking on, on, on the right way or help with the possibilities from pitch training to, to uh, help to, to write a right pitch or what, whatever yeah, what is okay. necessary. Uh, and getting it a bit more practical, Cornelius, I mean, you are at the edge of, uh, I mean, racing, yeah? And uh, if you are ahead of your competition, I mean, material-wise, I mean, strengths or whatever, um, you want to win. So how important is, uh, um, are these innovations for you as a, as a racer, as a racing team? Yeah, it's the driving force, I would say, because uh, uh, we already talked about a little bit like instruments and data and market analytics, and, um, but also I think it's super important to have a good a gut feeling about what's coming next uh, and the trend uh, at least like in the boating industry and in the I would say in the entire uh, sector of like uh, pleasure you know um, sailing boats building but also like racing boats building is really like heading towards sustainability it's super important to, um, to to bring together the network the right network and this is what Team Alicia is actually doing and that's what we have done when we started building the boat um, identifying the, uh, the technologies that are out there and, um, and looking at the different, let's say, characteristics of, of a startup because, uh, as a, you know, startups and scale-ups, it's still like quite a jump from a startup to a scale-up. And, and like to having this knowledge, um, that's what you can't find in data only. That's something that it's a people's business. You have to get to know the people. And, um, and this is what Team, Team Alicia is doing. So we are, we are a platform. We are a network. And also, this is how we work. This is how human beings work, right? We, we meet. We come to the sphere. It's an exchange. It's like sympathies, you know? And, and, and then, your, then creativity kicks in. And that is, I would say, that's the most important part. And then, of course, innovation and like the, the latest technology. But I think it really starts with the people and with a vision. Yes, and um, this is very interesting here on the table because um, I've been here for, for 20 years and uh, I saw lots of materials. But if Boris comes back with this, with this boat and the material is absolutely reliable, this is a revolution to this to this industry. Probably, it already yeah? is, and I think uh, um, if you have you have to visit it. It's in, in, in the, the fairgrounds in Hall 15. You can see actually a complete boat, which has been built by this, mm -hmm. and it's really fascinating because it's just you know it's closing the gap that we still have in boating industry when it comes to uh, recycling, for example. Huh? I mean, like it's you, you should not like start thinking. Uh, that uh, there is everything is already out there, and like you know, you can close the life cycle of a boat. Um, I think this is really something that we should also politically discuss when we discuss uh, standards, standardization, quality management, um, and sustainable finance, blue finance, um, the recycling of, of boating, and that's something really where I think um, we are at the beginning of this um, and uh, mm. revolution is already there and I would like to have it more, you know, up to speed. But as I s again, as I said, there are solutions out there on the market, <laughs> actually on this fairgrounds, that are uh, ready to revolutionize the entire industry. Recycling is tomorrow. Um, 
<laughs> no, but really, it's a big topic. I mean, we have the whole day tomorrow for yes, recycling and materials and so on. But if we come back to, to green boats, uh, because it's a good example, how did you come together? How, how did they manage to uh, uh, go onto the boat? As a, again, as I said, like the, uh, we were looking for uh, the, uh, the the, the most sustainable alternatives when it comes to composites, and um, especially like in this category of racing yachts, uh, there is there is no not so much let's say innovation when it comes to the the actual hull material, for example, or when it comes to like you know building the hull, the, the mold of the of the deck and everything, and um, and like it starts with the demand and with the vision of like having as much as sustainable sustainable products on the boat. Um, as uh, as possible, and yeah, and then you start looking into your network, and this is basically like a, a personal connection that we had already, uh, and and from there we you know we started to bring these guys to the to our uh, navy yard and like uh, to our, to our um, uh, you know the, the the basically the situation room when you start designing the boat, and then you see okay which kind what are the areas and the components that we can replace with these kind of materials, um, and this is how we came together. Okay, and how, how long took the process? I mean, when did they convince you completely? Just it, it was, maybe there are some... It was very quick, because okay. there, there are no other companies such as Greenbows on the market yet in, in this kind of category of boat building. So there was no alternative in that sense. Is this a perfect uh, company example for you? Gabriela? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's great that, you got, that you're providing a platform that, to support startups and these kind of like pilot projects. I don't know if this was a pilot project or whether you've worked on, on other um, like projects as well, but you know, these kind of projects are so important for startups to get off the ground and to test the product and to start collecting like feedback from their clients on how it can be improved or you know made better so I think it's great that that you're providing that opportunity for companies and there is I would say maybe um, the scope for, for more corporates to partner with startups just to give them you know the support that they need um, it's a win-win situation for both in the long run but um, I think there could be more initiatives like that in the industry where bigger corporates or like a corp like a corporation. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously, you're not a co like a corporate, but like where people with like money, so to speak, maybe like invest in new ideas and solutions and give the startups a platform to grow. Um, that's important. Yeah, yeah, we had a, a good example here yesterday with the developing a fuel cell. I mean, there were five companies, and then it took five, four or five years, and now they are ready uh, in summer. Yeah, but I think you have to cooperate. Is it correct? Or Laurent? Yeah, yeah, we need we need to increase the presence of uh, corporates into uh, say the community, into the innovation community, uh, because they could bring a lot of uh, say potential market, pot potential also co-ideas, co-creation. We, we, we thought it's very, very important. Uh, but we see the difficulty to bring them. We see, on the, for instance, on the Blue Investment Platform, we had many investors joining, but still very few corporates. So our target now is to bring more corporates on to check the pro projects, to check the pipelines. But it still requires a lot of uh, effort also on our side to, to, to really have them on board. Okay, yeah. So, and um, just practical, I mean, don't know who is watching us and, or he is, who is sitting here. If I have a nice idea and I'm in the yachting sector and I need some money, what do I do? What do I, first step, second step, third step? Well, for us personally, like it has to be more than an idea. <laughs> so there just needs to be um, something there to work with. Um, there's not that many investors that will invest in an idea. Um, but if you had like you know an, a minimum viable product, like if you'd built something, um, you'd got some like great feedback from the market, and potentially had some like pre-orders or some traction. Um, then I guess you'd need to start thinking about like how much you need to raise to get you to where you need to be, um, and then put together a pitch deck and start going out to the market and approaching investors with that deck. Um, yeah, that's what. Obviously, we, we support startups to create all those materials and uh, approach invest, like approach our network of investors. Um, but yeah, that would be the 
the first step to kind of start thinking about how much you need to raise and, and why you need to raise that money? Okay, same advice from you, Benno. I mean, right. it's yeah. similar. So we yeah. do it in, in this way. So we look on the on the status. We do what is a minimal uh, product on the market already is the experience, and then we look. But it changes also a little bit. So it was mentioned it's difficult to raise money. I started 20 years ago with with startup coaching. That was really horrible to to, to find money to get money for new ideas on the market. Now I have projects really not, that have no problem to raise to one or two million in an early stage. So um, there's a change, not like in the US, but, but I believe, especially in Germany, the, the, the landscape changed a little bit. And oh, also okay. the culture. Yeah, so yeah. Germany has a, a good startup culture yeah. at the moment, would you say? Yeah, I would say we have a good ecosystem meanwhile we have a lot of incentives but also a good in investor scene and i believe if you have a good idea if you have a good business case then you will find your money to start your business do you have a only mm -hmm. to, to raise really big amounts of money maybe a, a scale up that's maybe more, more difficult do you have an example of your... Um, yeah, I just have... Uh, that's not in the boating. It's uh, about recycling of uh, e-batteries. Um, new concept developed at the University of Aachen and uh, they just raised, I think, 1.2 million in really early stage. So they have no, no product at the moment. They have only concept. So that's really going on. Okay, the concept in this case is okay to raise Yeah, them. because they have, a, okay, they, they have a labor standard at the university, but it's deep tech and it's also another kind of, of financing than maybe in uh, digital business cases. Okay, and Cornelius, where do, you, where do you see, where do we need more innovation? In, I think, in terms of material, okay, I'm absolutely with you, <laughs> but... Um, any other on the board, if you look at the board as a whole? Again, I think like um, the life cycle itself is something that has, where we have to put like a spotlight on. Um, I think this is also where we have great opportunities in Europe, uh, the single market and um, in my previous life, I was also like working in European affairs and I specifically on digitization and the great opportunities that's coming from, from that and from yeah. the data economy and um, the creation of digital innovation hubs. Um, everything that is like uh, sort of, um, you know, uh, creating platforms uh, for innovation is great. And if we can specifically have, for example, these hubs for the blue economy, uh, bringing together different levels of, let's say, uh, of the business world, so startups, entrepreneurs, uh, scale-ups, but also like big corporate and you know bigger companies, and not only like you know companies that are specifically in in the blue economy, but um, really horizontal uh, companies with horizontal layers uh, that can you know bring in new ideas and and new technologies. Okay, same with you, Laurent. So I, I I think what I've seen uh, over the last two, three years, it's not recent, but also it was confirmed several times, was the different pace of innovation between the innovation, the startup, uh, and so on, and the marina infrastructures. And I think we need to fix this problem because we need to bring everyone on board together on the same platform to discuss. Because today, when I see some very new, interesting projects from marina, they do not take into account the new need of this industry. So I see some uh, marina retrofitting right now, but mm. from an electric power perspective, from a recycling perspective, they are not at all at the level which is required or would be required in the next three to five years. So okay, the, yeah. in, the infrastructure activities of this industry are late in innovation compared to the current uh, piece of technological pace of technological innovation so we need to find a way to catch up on this it's 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 a that will be a problem for you know for, for investment investors you said oh 
does not work, so I'm waiting for it. But it, it's, a, it's a big structural problem. Yeah, 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 okay, I understand. So maybe, uh, okay, I do they want to in invest in batteries or electric boats, etc. And then they think, okay, the marina infrastructure is not, is absolutely, in my opinion, not there. Yeah? And so, um, we have to think 10, 15 years ahead because Hall 4 is filled with electric boats. But uh, where do you uh, charge them? I don't know. Right. Is this, uh, I mean, how can we approach this... Um, so we, we, we need sector. to, in this innovation community, we need to bring the marina managers, the marina owners, public or private. We need to get also the infrastructure investors into it to say, let's finance the new round of investors, but take a 10 years perspective uh, in order to be up to date with the pace of innovation and with the new sustainability requirements, the new, uh, okay, what is acceptable, what will be acceptable tomorrow by, I would say, people and by uh, population. Yeah, what, what do you see? Is this a big market? Because, um, I mean, it's the same as in the car industry, it's just 2%, I think, are electric boats of all, all the vessels floating. Huh? Um, but it will, I mean, how long do we have them? Is already... Yeah, we might, yeah, and, sorry, and we might need some regulatory innovation also. Uh, some new laws to be able to accelerate the space of innovation, to force some infrastructures to innovate uh, faster. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, Cornelius. You want? Yeah, just like also what, what you just said. Like I, I think like um, regulation and said that the commission already has left, but I think with regulation you can really like set certain let's say long-term goals, and that creates also stability for the market, right? And, um, and I think the, the European Union as a market is like a, is a really great example for this, but like not too detailed regulation and then having the standardization, the bottom-up standardization defining and filling the gaps of these, let's say, regulatory long-term goals. And I think uh, with the European Green Deal has been mentioned uh, and the blue, uh, the blue Green Deal, um, I think uh, both colors are fantastic, green and blue. I mean, you see it here on the floor. Um, it, you know, setting setting the right uh, incentives for 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 investments, and then using the creativity of of entrepreneurs, startup scalers that we have on the single market and the international community here, um, to really uh, you know create the ecosystem and to grow, and and I think this is um, yeah I think this is like the the right approach to this. Yes, Laurent. Yeah, just, just to complement as an example. Uh, the Olympic port of Barcelona is going to be fully renovated, integrating all the current uh, new technologies in all domains to be able to be one of the most sustainable uh, ports. And I think we lost uh, in 2024 uh, the America's Cup. Uh, I think that will be a lab to show all this kind of innovation, how it could be integrated into a port infrastructure, a marina infrastructure. Ah, okay, the port there will invest now in all, okay, yeah, yeah, it's a, I mean, they have the whole community of all over the world, they will have, they will have it there, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a good example, yeah. Um, anything to add? Because I had to do a bit uh, pace here, um, because we have, <laughs> <laughs> um, Gabriela, just, uh, what's the, the winner here from this morning, was this your favorite? Um, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit torn because I work with all those founders and I know like how like driven they all are and how they're all doing great things in their own right. Um, so it's hard for me to pick a favorite, I have to say. But it was a, a majority vote that won. So yeah, no, he's, he's doing very cool stuff and it's very innovative. There's not many other companies, well, there, is, there are no other companies doing what he's doing. Um, you know, like the electric boat market. It's, there's a lot of electric boats and stuff. So it's quite cool to see and like truly different technology emerging. Yeah. Yeah. Laurent and you? Uh, yeah, it was uh, one of my favorites. It's favorite. already done, you can comment now. Yeah, yeah, no, it was one of my favorites. No. I think, uh, yeah, when I see the technology, I, 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 I could imagine the potential of uh, energy absorption in uh, sea or ocean. So I uh, could imagine all the power that could bring. So I think it's a very appealing Appealing technology, appealing case. So I, w I want to know more. That's why. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> okay, that's a hint. Um, 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. Laurent stays uh, yeah. with us. He will present uh, the Blue Invest program. Um, and uh, the other three, thank you. Thanks a lot for coming, even this morning. Thank you.